Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. So, in today's video, we are going to be completing the Ultimate Cuphead Christmas Challenge. So, what does the Ultimate Cuphead Christmas Challenge actually entail? The loadout that I used for this challenge was the Chaser as my first shot, since it's green. And for my second shot, I used the Spread Shot, because it, it's red. The charm I used for this challenge was the heart ring because it's also red and I didn't want to use the twin hearts or the heart charm because I already did a video like that. Other than those, I used super art 1 because, I, I don't know, I just wanted to use super art 1. Other than that, the rules for this challenge are pretty simple. Every boss must be beaten on expert difficulty and to make the challenge even harder, during every single boss fight of this challenge, I am not allowed to touch the color red or the color green. Just to elaborate a bit more on the color rule, if it was in the foreground, aka the background of the boss fight, then I didn't count it as touching because I can't really do anything about that. So if it was spawned by the boss, or if it's one of the boss's attacks, or maybe it's the boss itself, I cannot touch it. And just as a gift for all of you, for this challenge, I'm also going to be doing every single run and gun level with these challenge rules. With all that said, let's get right into the challenge. The first boss up in this challenge is obviously going to be the root pack. And as long as I don't touch it, people make a lot of... people... I don't know what I just said. The first boss of this challenge is obviously going to be the root pack. The first two phases of this boss fight are extremely simple. There is nothing green that I can touch, so I just went as close as possible and used my spread shot, and that's pretty much it. Once we made it to the carrot phase, technically the ends of the carrots are green, so we're gonna make sure that we don't accidentally run into the end of the carrot, but it's the first boss of the challenge, it's not that hard, we got it done. What is red and what is green, I do not know. I have absolutely no idea, I cannot touch his pants. As you can probably tell, the next boss is Rivian Croaks. During their first phase, I don't really have to worry about anything unless I literally run into one of them. But my weapons are really good at dealing with the fireflies, so the first phase is really easy. Once we made it to the second phase, I had some issues trying to find what I could and could not touch. I can't touch this guy's pants or his brother. Pause. Other than that, the second phase is the second phase. As long as I don't run into one of them, we're perfectly fine. With those two phases done, we're on to the final phase. For this phase, I mainly use the chaser. I know it does less damage, but trying to hit them with the spread shot absolutely sucks. So other than just having a really close call with the snake attack... Wait, these are green. Wait, no, that's gray. Oh, chat, we're clutch. As long as I don't take damage here, we're fine. Once I found out I could stand on those platforms, this boss was really easy, and we're done. I cannot touch his nose. I can run into the back of him, just not the front of him. Can't touch his tongue either. No kissing goop. Hey yo, what the fuck? I don't have much to say about the first or second phase of this boss fight. I just followed him around with the spread shot and made sure that the few pixels of his red nose didn't actually hit me. The second phase, I guess, does get a bit more difficult because I can't run into his boxing glove. But other than that, it's really easy. Once we make it into the final phase, everything changes because we are not allowed to jump. If I jump, that means I'm passing up and through the boss, which means I'm actually hitting his nose, which in fact is red. So I just used the chaser and dashed when I could, and we finished it. What is red and what is green? I can't run it. She is red. I can't touch Hildeberg. I, it's hard to do this challenge without sounding weird. Anyways, our next boss is gonna be Hildeberg. Like I said, weirdly, in the intro, the only things that we technically cannot touch are the green zeppelins that get spawned, and the boss herself. I didn't know what weapon to use for plane bosses, so I ended up just using the pea shooter. The final phase is extremely intense, because not only can I not run into her, because that's touching the color red, but also, I cannot hit the red UFOs, and I also can't hit the UFO lasers because those are also green. So basically, I just can't use my super in the final phase, and I also can't get hit. 
We had a really close call at the end of the boss fight, but if you slow it down, it's actually the star that hits me and the laser doesn't even get close. So with all that done, this boss is finished. I have no words. I have no words. I can't move anywhere. Ah, fuck. Okay. This phase is... Our next boss up is Cagney Carnation, and this boss is absolutely horrible. I pretty much cannot touch anything in this boss fight. The bottom of the platform, those are green. The stem of Cagney, those are green. The plants that he spawns, those are green. The vines that spawn those plants, those are also green. The floating thing at the top, it's also a little bit green. So I basically just can't do anything. Initially, this was looking like one of the hardest Cuphead boss challenges I have done in an extremely long time. Until I realized I can just stand in the corner and use the chaser and then it, the, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> we are fine. <laughs> my laugh sounds extremely weird during that part, but it's because I had a limiter on my mic at the time. But uh, anyways, all I would do is just crouch and then dash. So I made sure I did not touch the bottom of the platform. And then I would literally just sit there in the corner and use my chaser. And that made the first phases of this boss fight extremely easy. Once he entered his second phase, I didn't have to worry about anything other than running into the back of the carrots. But other than that, the second phase is pretty easy. And now we're on to the third phase, which again, all I have to do is just not get hit by his vines, and we're perfectly fine. With Cagney defeated, that means we've beaten every Inkwell Isle 1 boss, which means we're on to Inkwell Isle 2, and we're on to another really, really hard boss, Barnes von Bonbon. Okay, what is red in this fight? A lot of things. That platform is green. I can't touch the platform. Are you serious? Yeah, the one convenient mobility option I have, and I can't even touch it. Not only is there a giant green platform I can't touch, but also there's some minions that are just completely impossible. Uh. Oh, fuck, those touch me. How am I supposed to. Just don't give me the jawbreaker, and then I'll fucking love you. I don't even care, bro. I don't even care. I don't even care. I literally don't even... You're gonna give me the fuck up. The minions I ended up getting for the winning attempt were EDP. Later. I need to put a disclaimer. I am allowed to make EDP jokes because <laughs> I'm his age <laughs> Let this, this be known, it. let this be known, I am not a pedophile. Which overall is pretty easy, I just have to make sure I'm missing the platform every time. The next one was the gumball machine, which is probably the easiest one to dodge out of all of them, because all I have to do is just stand there and use my spread shot. The final one was the candy corn, which is a lot like EDP, I just stand in the corner and hope I don't touch the platform accidentally, and overall, it's pretty easy. Once we kill those three minions, we make it to the final phase. This part would be pretty hard, but majority of the things in this phase are actually parryable. The heads that she shoots at you are parryable, which means they're pink. Same thing as the little mint that she rolls out, that's also pink. So really all I do is just use the chaser and try and parry to get my way out of situations. And other than that, it's really just dodging the platform as best as possible, and that's it. The next boss up is Jimmy the Great. And this is pretty much just a normal boss fight because the only red and green things in this boss fight is him. So basically I just couldn't use my super art unless I was very very big brain. I'm pretty sure a part of you aren't- uh, nope, you're all f unless I hit you in the c Okay. Top percent. Top percent. Now before you say anything, his shorts are very clearly green. I'm not going to redo the entire boss fight just so I can not use my super. Okay, fine. There. Are we happy now? Anyways, other than, I guess, that, this boss fight isn't that much different, and it's pretty easy. 
Can't wait for all the comments. Well, technically, he, you're touching your shot every single time you shoot it. Nah. That's, that's what you guys sound like. If you if you were thinking about typing that, or if you already did. That's right. The next boss up in this challenge is going to be Beppy the Clown. For the first phase, it's not that bad. I just have to make sure I don't actually run into him. And other than that, I'm perfectly fine. The second phase does get a bit more difficult because the balloon dogs that he spawns have red mouths. So I have to make sure that I'm not touching those accidentally. But the spread shot works really well to get rid of them, so we don't have to worry about much. Once we make it to the third phase, the only thing that we have to worry about is the green donkey and his attack. But I only got that once, and it's pretty easy to dodge, so that's also easy. Once we make it to the final phase, really the biggest threat is accidentally hitting one of the penguins, because they're green, so I can't touch them. So I made sure to use my super during this phase to get rid of as many as possible. And once we were done that, I just used my spread shot, and we got it done. <coughs> Okay, how much do we want to bet that I make it out of this? If I do, you have to subscribe right now. Alright, our next boss is Wally Warbles. Overall, this boss fight's pretty easy because it's a lot like Jimmy the Great. I basically just can't use my super. There are the eggshells, which I can't run into because they're both red and green. But if I just stay in the same spot and move up and down, I can't run into those, so it's perfectly fine. Same thing goes for the second phase. I just have to make sure that I don't use my super, and other than that, it's pretty easy. The third phase is a bit more difficult because not only can I not use my super, but I also have to make sure that I don't accidentally run into the eggs. So basically, the third phase is just hitless, and other than that, it's fine. The fourth phase is where we get to take a bit of a break because the only red things that he can actually hit us with are the heart that he shoots out or the apple cores that he shoots from his mouth. So we gotta make sure we don't run into those, but we can also use our super in this phase, so it's really easy. With the last four defeated, we're on to probably the most dreaded boss fight of this challenge, Grim Matchstick. Because if you didn't know, pretty much the primary colors of this boss are red and green. And to make matters even worse, the shots that I have for this challenge are the chaser and the spread shot, which are two of probably the worst weapons for this boss fight. Luckily for us, the first phase isn't horrible. I just have to make sure that I don't accidentally run into him. And once we do enough damage, I also have to make sure I don't hit the tail. But I just used my chaser when I got far enough away from him. And then when I got closer, I would use my spread shot. And then we're done with this phase. Once he goes into the second phase, the clouds are moving against us, so we don't have to worry about running into him unless we literally try to. I ended up using the spread shot for this phase, just because I didn't like how much damage I was doing with the chaser. But overall, it's just a normal phase 2. With those two phases done, we're on to the final phase, which, like I said, is absolutely horrible. I'm going to use my super at the beginning of this boss fight just to do as much damage as possible. And I'm also going to make sure that I'm using my spread shot when he does his flamethrower attack. I can't really use my chaser at all because then it will lock on to the flame balls instead of him. So really my only chance to deal damage is during his flamethrower attack. And to do the most damage possible, I'm going to use the spread shot. Luckily for me, I had a lot of practice doing this boss with the spread shot because I did my worst loadout challenge. So overall, decently hard boss, but not impossible. With Grim defeated, that means we're done Inkwell Isle 2. We're halfway done the challenge. Let's head on to Inkwell Isle 3. All right, our first boss of Inkwell Isle 3 is gonna be Rumor Honeybottoms. This boss is one of the easier bosses, especially in Inkwell Isle 3, because there's pretty much nothing that we have to worry about. Apart from a couple noses on enemies, there's literally nothing else red or green in this entire boss fight. So it's basically just perfectly normal. The first phase is easily completed with the spread shot. Same thing as phase 2. The spread shot also deals massive damage during her phase transition. And once she's in phase 3, we can use the chaser and all we have to do is focus on dodging. And it's pretty easy. Alright, our next boss up is Captain Brownie Beard. This boss fight's a lot like Rumor Honeybottoms. So there's nothing that I'm not really supposed to touch. I mean, I can't touch the boat, but I have the chaser, so I don't even need to. 
So overall, this boss fight's really, really easy. The first, second, and third phase are all easily completed with either using the chaser from far away or just being decently close to him and using the spread shot. Once we make it to the final phase, I'm going to make sure to use my super and I again just do the same thing. If I'm far enough away, I'll use my chaser, but if I can get close enough, then I'm going to make sure to use the spread shot because then I can deal a ton of damage. And other than that, I don't have much else to say for this boss fight. It's pretty easy. We got it done. Oh, we get the- Oh, we get the- Oh, chat, we get the- We get the Babuya! Oh, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. That's what I want for Christmas, but... Dead mice. For those of you at home who like watching me suffer, you're in luck because this boss is slightly harder than the last two. That's right, we're on to Verna Vermin. In this boss fight, again, there's not that many red or green things. In the first phase, the bombs that he shoots out are red and green. So as long as I don't get hit directly by those, then we're fine. And also, obviously, his can does have a red bit on there. So I have to make sure I don't get hit by that. Other than that, the first phase is pretty simple. I'm just going to use my spread shot and my chaser whenever I can. And yeah, it's pretty easy. And now we're on to the second phase. For the second phase, there's obviously only one thing I have to worry about, and that's the bottle caps. There's some bottle caps that are red and some that are green, so we're going to focus on that as much as possible because the other ones don't matter. Since this phase is so close together, I'm just going to use my spread shot because it does massive damage and gets the phase over really fast. Now that we're in the final phase, there's nothing red or green for us to hit, so we're just going to use our super art and kill all the rats at once, and we're going to use our spread shot because it does a ton of damage, and we're done. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, our next boss is going to be Calamaria. The first phase of this boss fight is not horrible. There's a ton of stuff that I can get hit by, but really it's just regular phase one. I'm just going to try my best to not take damage in this phase. I can get hit by the pirates, I can get hit by the puffer fish, I can get hit by the red fish. There's a lot of stuff that I can get hit by, so I'm just going to try and not take damage. I ran into some problems during the second phase. You know that ginormous laser that takes up like the entire screen? Yeah, that's green. Luckily for us, I could easily avoid that attack by just going up to the top of the screen, but that kind of changes in the third phase. Not only are her freezing attacks green in this phase, but she also shoots out green skulls that can run into you. And, luckily for us, the entire cave system is surrounded in red coral. So pretty much, if I take damage or hit anything that's not the spikes, I lose. Again, luckily for us, if I go to the very bottom of the screen, I can actually bait out the attack so that it's lower than usual. Then I can shrink and make it up above the freezing attack and not touch the coral all at the same time. So with a bit of practice and obviously with a bit of luck, we got it done. As a reward for beating that boss, we get our next boss, Sally Stage Play. Now in the first and second phase, there's nothing you can really say that's green or red. Technically, you could say that she is wearing a green dress but I didn't run into her anyways, so it doesn't even matter. So pretty much, I'm just going to play this completely normal and use my spread shot when I get close to her, and then when I'm further away, I'm going to use my chaser. The third phase doesn't really change much. The only thing that I can't hit is the actual boss herself, but luckily for us, there's enough clearance underneath the boss where I can still use the spread shot to deal a ton of damage. So we don't have anything to worry about, and that phase is easy. Once she's in the final phase, the only thing that can make us fail the run is the roses that get dropped, but we have the chaser shot, so we can just focus on dodging, and this phase is also really easy. Everybody would be like, oh, Dr. Cow is so hard. But for us, he's our homie. That's right, for this challenge, Dr. Cal is an absolute piece of magnificentness. What? Throughout the entire boss fight, there are very, very few things that can actually hit us. Technically, the laser that he shoots does turn green, but you can pretty much one cycle the laser, so that's not a problem. The next thing is the weird robots that he sends out, and also the bombs. Those have red parts on them, but if we just shoot them fast enough so that they don't actually reach us, they can't deal damage to us. And the final thing is in his final phase, where he shoots a bunch of red crystals, which you would think is hard, but I'm a god gamer, so it's perfectly fine. 
So overall, this boss fight's not actually that bad. And we even ended up getting an S rank. Nice job, boys. That was nice. That was nice. Was that our S rank? No. <laughs> I don't have rank every single aisle, baby. And of course, it was the man himself, Dr. Cal. These are red. Or these are green. No, they're not. They're not They're not either of those colors. That's right. Our next boss up is the Phantom Express. And in total, there are three red and green things in this entire boss fight. Number one is going to be during the second phase. It's the skeleton's hat. Yeah, I don't know. Then during the third phase, it's the tongue of the ghosts that gets summoned. And during the fourth phase, it's the heart on the train, which you can't even touch. So yeah, this boss is not difficult, like, at all. I used my spread shot for pretty much this entire boss fight, but during the final phase, I used the chaser just because I like using the chaser. So yeah, definitely one of the easier bosses in this challenge. Alright, with all of those bosses completed, we are now on to Inkwell Hell to fight our first boss, King Dice. Now for this challenge, since I've already achieved absolute mad lad status, we are going to be fighting every single one of King Dice's minions. Let's get it. Basically, I'm just going to talk about every single mini boss from 1 to 9, and then we're going to talk about the final boss, King Dice. Alright, the first mini boss of the challenge is going to be the Tipsy Troop. This mini boss isn't that bad. All three of the glasses do have red or green on them, so as long as I don't run into them, we're fine. The taller female glass does spawn minions, which are both red and green, and they also shoot red eyeballs, but they're easily taken care of with my chaser shot, so we don't have to worry about them. I'm really just going to try and use my spread shot close up to deal a ton of damage, and it's over pretty fast. The next boss up is going to be Chip's Bed again. I don't have to worry about this boss much because the only thing that can hit me are the bottom four chips. So I'm just going to use my chaser and dodge to the best of my abilities, and this one's really easy. The next boss up on our list is Mr. Wheezy, and he is really easy because there's nothing red or green in this phase. The only thing that does suck about this boss fight is my spread shot doesn't make it all the way across to hit him, so we're gonna have to use the chaser, which takes forever. But with some super arts and some waiting, it's over pretty fast. Alright, boss number four, Pippin Dot. This boss, again, is very, very easy because there's nothing that can actually hit me. The only thing in this phase is, again, the boss, which is actually red, so all we have to do is not run into them and we're fine. I used the normal strat of just using my spread shot when I was up close, but if I had to dodge some attacks, then I would go back and use my chaser, and it's pretty easy. But everything changes because our next boss up is Hoppus Pocus. Now, you might be looking at this boss and realize that the only red or green thing is his bow tie, but trust me, this rabbit's wanted for loitering in 85 different countries. I absolutely hate him. He sucks. The attacks are just stupidly hard to dodge, especially without smoke dash, and overall, I just hate this boss fight. So, the challenge doesn't affect this boss much, it does suck because I'm doing way less damage than I would be with something like the roundabout. So, it just extends this boss fight even longer, making it absolutely horrible. Alright, so, the next boss is gonna be Fear Lap, and the only things that can make me fail the challenge are the small skeleton guys on the horses, and his hat and bow tie. Um, yeah, so overall, this boss fight's gonna be extremely easy. I'm just gonna stick at the back of the screen and use my super when I have it. And yeah, it's it's really easy. Alright, we're on to our final set of mini bosses. Our next boss is gonna be Pirouetta. This boss fight sucks a lot, because not only is she red and green, but also some of the platforms that we can stand on are also green. Although the second and fourth platforms are blue, so we can stand on those. We are allowed to parry the green ones just as long as we don't stand on them, because that would be touching the color green. So yeah, overall this boss fight is just extremely annoying. Whenever she would stop moving, I would make sure to use my spread shot, but when she was moving around, I wanted to use my chaser. So yeah, Pirouetta is definitely one of, if not the hardest mini bosses so far. Alright, it's time, Mangosteen, baby. He's really easy. 
The only thing that can make me fail this challenge are the green blocks, but they're really easy to avoid, so yeah, it's not hard. All I'm gonna do is just stand underneath him and use my spread shot, and it's over very, very fast. For our ninth and final mini boss, we've got Mr. Chimes. Now again, there's nothing that can really make me fail this challenge. I mean, I guess he gets, he's got red pants. I don't know. I'm literally just gonna try and match the cards properly, but I, I don't. But yeah, I just use my pea shooter and we finish it. Now we move on to the ultimate final boss of all nine of these mini bosses, King Dice. And guess what? There's nothing that can make me fail this. His head doesn't have a hitbox, so his green eyes are actually in the foreground, so I don't have to worry about them. So literally, I don't have to worry about anything. Alright, with King Dice and his minions sufficiently slapped, we are on to the final boss, the Devil. For the final boss of this challenge, he is really not that difficult. In literally all of his phases, there's nothing that can actually touch us. The first phase is really easy, we're just gonna use the spread shot and deal massive damage. Once we're done with that phase, we make it to the final phases, which are even easier because I do even more damage. I am aware that he is red in this phase, but there's no way for me to avoid him, and he's in the foreground, so he doesn't count. So yeah, overall, pretty easy boss, especially for the final boss of this challenge, but don't leave yet because we still got some running gun levels. The first level of this challenge is Forest Follies. Now, I would say that all of these are very, very hard, but I have the chaser, so literally nothing gets close to me at all, so I don't have to worry about anything. There is a lot of stuff that can hit me in this level, so I'm just gonna make sure that I don't get hit. But yeah, for the first level of this challenge, it's not bad, but we got it done. Our next level up is gonna be Tree Top Trouble. Um, excuse me. Apart from getting attacked by Matrix Bugs, this level is pretty easy. The only thing that's a real issue is the final part. Now, the problem with this is that those bugs are holding green leaves. And those leaves, you can stand on those leaves. They're not in the foreground, and also they don't count as the actual ground, because they're not. So, technically, I can't touch them. I know I've broken the rules, like, a lot, but you know. So, literally all I'm gonna do is just stack up HP with the heart ring and then just truck my way through this entire level. And yeah, once we make it past the final boss, it's fine. Fun Fair Fever is our next run and gun level up, and there's a decent amount of red and green things in this level. There's a lot of small things that can be spawned, like there's a green balloon that can get spawned, sometimes there's clowns that balance on a red ball instead of a blue one. The cannon can also shoot a green ball, and the hot dog during the final part can also shoot ketchup and relish, which is red and green. So, definitely not as easy as Forest Follies, but overall, not horrible. Alright, our next level is gonna be Fun House Frazzle. This level is much like the last level. It's not that difficult, but there is still a ton of stuff that's red or green. There's so much stuff in these levels that I can't even begin to name all the stuff that I can't touch. So literally, we're just gonna try our best to not take any damage. Now I know that's pretty obvious, but that's really what I'm just gonna try and do. Overall, like I said, this level's a lot like every other level. I'm seriously just gonna try and not take any damage. The hardest part was probably the part with the tubas at the end, but I have my chaser, so that's perfectly fine. And once we kill the weird face wall, we finished all Inkwell Isle 2 levels, and it's on to Inkwell Isle 3. The next level we've got is Rugged Ridge. Now this level is by far the hardest level that we've done so far. There are so many things that can make me fail this challenge. There's, there's two. The first thing is tongues on enemies. Basically, if it has a tongue, it's red, so I don't touch its mouth. The next thing is the dragons in the elevator part. And then other than that, there's literally nothing else. I mean, the guys that throw the pickaxes have green hats. I, I, I don't know. But yeah, when I said this was hard, that was a complete lie. This is definitely the easiest level so far because literally nothing can make us fail this challenge unless I just go kamikaze and run into something. But yeah, the only difficult thing is the parkour part at the end of it just because that's just normally difficult. But other than that, this level is extremely easy. Mr. Krabs, 
Aye, aye, aye. All right, we're on to our final run and gun level of this challenge, Perilous Piers. Now, this level is very, very similar to Funhouse Frazzle because there's so many things that I can get hit by that I can't even name them, but they're not that hard to dodge. The level is pretty much normal up until the final part because I'm just trying to avoid damage as best as possible. And overall, for majority of the level, it's really, really easy, except for once we make it to the final part. If you haven't done the pacifist for this level, then you don't know what I'm talking about, but if you have, you know that the final part is absolutely horrible. I have the spread shot which makes it like 10 times easier, but it still sucks a lot. Basically, there's just a ton of shrimp that get thrown at you, they're really hard to kill and they're really hard to dodge, and of course, one of them has to be red. And while doing all of this, you also have to parry an anchor on top of the octopus you're riding to break some rocks. I, I don't know. Anyways, this part is absolutely horrible. I really hate this part of the level. But after a couple of attempts, we got past it and we're done. So there we go. A bit of an anticlimactic ending, but you know, it is what it is. To answer the question, can you beat the ultimate Christmas Cuphead challenge? The answer is of course, yes. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and thank you guys so much in general. I had an absolute amazing time this year and I'm so happy that I get to make videos for you guys. I just absolutely love what I get to do and it's so awesome that I actually get to do it, so thank you. If you have any fun suggestions for challenges like this, leave them in the comments below and maybe I'll try them out. So again, Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.